I'm excited to introduce our next speaker, Dan Demers. He is the CEO and co-founder of Cinchi, a pioneer in dataware platform technology. Today, Dan is going to talk to us about demystifying data mesh, data fabric, and dataware. Previously, Dan was an IT executive at some of the biggest financial institutions in the world, where he was responsible for delivering mission-critical projects and technology investments. Dan has appeared on stage at leading technology events, including TechCrunch, Strata NYC, and AI4. He is also the president of the Data Collaboration Alliance, a nonprofit that is dedicated to helping the world's people and organizations get full control of their information. Welcome to the stage, Dan. All right, Dan, great to have you here. If you notice when I said dedicated, I almost have trouble saying it because I keep saying dedicated so much. But <laughs> well, welcome, welcome to welcome to the dedicated conference. Really, really glad to have you here. I'm Happy going day. to hop off the virtual stage here and let you take it away. And then I will be back in about 10 minutes for some questions. All right, awesome. By the way, it was amazing how you're able to snap your fingers, change your outfit, do the intro, snap your fingers, and come back. <laughs> that was awesome. But yeah, that's are. a new skill I found. So. That's my, you'll have to teach me that one day. Um, so, uh, hey, everyone, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, hopefully, you can see my screen uh, as well. I'm going to introduce you to the idea of dataware and how it uh, really fills in the gaps that data fabric and data mesh and all these uh, hype, hype cycles that are kind of in, in full uh, gear these days. Uh, leave behind. Uh, so the idea of dataware is ultimately to eliminate uh, integration, which is a, a huge problem uh, for the world. Uh, if you think about how much time is spent on integration, it's it's over half of the IT capacity of most companies on the planet. And the problem with this is not so much that you have to do it; it's the fact that it, it gets more expensive as you deliver more applications. More software equals more integration. So the integration tax gets more expensive as time goes by. You do digital transformation, bam, your tax rate goes up. You do more integration. Uh, and that is the problem with, with integration. It's a huge problem. Uh, and if you think of data warehouses that have been around for many decades, it doesn't fix integration. You do more integrations, not less. You're working around the fact that the data is fragmented and siloed. Even virtualization doesn't eliminate integrations. Uh, apps still need to share data, and they do that using APIs and, and ETLs and sending copies back and forth. Uh, master data management is another uh, workaround that solves for the fact that data is managed in multiple applications, even though it should be the same data. And it doesn't eliminate integration. You're still doing integration. Uh, even a data lake where you're taking the raw data out of your operational systems and centralizing it doesn't eliminate the need for apps to do integration with each other and between the applications and the lake. Uh, a lake house doesn't eliminate integration. You're still having to connect your apps together, copy data back and forth from app to app and from app to the raw zone and from the raw zone to your curated view. You're still doing integration. Even a data mesh, which enables uh, federated uh, governance where you're managing data as a product and into domains that enable uh, domain-based autonomy, uh, it's really concentrated on the analytical plane and you're still having to do integration between your applications, between your data products. Uh, if you need an analytic or an insight that spans uh, domains, spans data products, you're going to do integration. Uh, a data fabric simplifies integration, but doesn't eliminate it. Uh, apps still manage data, and you're still uh, creating APIs and ETLs and moving data from your left pocket to your to your right pocket. And of course, APIs, which have been around for a long time, even uh, uh, even going into microservices, doesn't eliminate integration. You're still doing integration. Um, you're connecting your APIs together, and when data needs to be shared, you're you're doing data sharing via again APIs and ETLs, and having to do reconciliations. You're still doing integration. Uh, so, what actually is the answer? Well, uh, the answer has already revealed itself, but in a different context. If you look at how you work as a team on files, you're using something like a Google Drive or a SharePoint or a Box or some type of collaboration platform where you're not sending copies back and forth as email attachments as you would have 10, 20 years ago. What you're doing is you're collaborating on the file in real time. Uh, so in the context of documents and files and presentations and uh, spreadsheets, we're already used to uh, the idea of collaboration and how it eliminates the need for integration. Uh, but apply that same framework to data and the same outcome happens. So moving from data storage to data sharing to data collaboration where it's managing access 
not sending copies back and forth. Uh, so if you think about what is simpler, the traditional model where there's an app for everything and a data store for every app, and anytime you want to share data, you're doing integration. That's the old way. The new way is that you're collaborating on data in real time, and there is no integration. It's a live view. And what's been missing is that circle in the middle, that idea of dataware, which is actually an old idea, but it's only now becoming possible. So think hardware, software, and now dataware. So integration was the problem without dataware. More apps, more integration. But by adopting dataware, regardless if you buy or build a dataware platform, if you do it right, uh, as you deliver more applications, you do less integration. And that's the, that's the shift. Uh, and that's a really big deal. Uh, it, here's the platform uh, kind of live in action. We use it to, to run our entire business. Uh, but um, looks like the video stream isn't uh, working. But uh, uh, I'm not sure what's actually happening. <laughs> it's, it's just a, a YouTube video of the recording. We're, um, we're overloading all the streaming here now. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, did you lose me there for a second as well? No, know. no, I see you. Just uh, the video is loading a bit. Oh, okay. Strange. Uh, so um, uh, anyways, imagine a, a universal interface that allows you to interact with data across applications where to a business user, they can still use applications as they exist today, but they can basically sweep the application away and go direct to the data uh, where that uh, can be accessed without this idea of silos because silos are an artificial idea. They don't make sense uh, to the business. Um, and it actually looks like my, okay, there we go. <laughs> I thought my browser was on there. Um, so the, the, the vision of, of dataware is that you have applications and you have people, like real regular people, business users, technology users, builders, everyone, all collaborating on data in real time where there is no need to build integrations. Uh, so the, a question that people often ask is, well, how do you actually get started? If the current reality is I have thousands or hundreds or dozens, uh, some of our customers have tens of thousands of existing systems, SaaS apps, uh, on-prem apps, mainframes, spreadsheets, how do you actually get to this future vision where you have dataware enabling data collaboration? Uh, well, you're not gonna replace everything that you have. What you can do though, is change how you deliver change. So the next time you buy an application or build an application or need to integrate two applications, that's the opportunity to introduce dataware and begin the transformation and begin to simplify and remove the complexity. So the, the whole idea is to get it such that you're doing less integration with every project, not more, less. So it starts with a dataware platform. You can buy, you can build a dataware platform. Uh, a dataware platform includes the capabilities of a data fabric that allow you to connect your applications, not to each other, but each to the network, just like how your devices in your home connect to your Wi-Fi network, yet they can collaborate with each other. I can use my iPhone and, and stream uh, to my uh, TV using uh, AirPlay as an example, but I didn't have to run a wire from my phone to the TV. It was through the network. That's the idea of the data fabric. But when I'm building new applications, I need to add new data. I want to be able to do that in a data-centric way uh, where I'm not standing up new silos. I want to originate data directly in the dataware platform uh, such that it plays the role of the system of origination, the system of record. I want to be able to plug in existing and even future vis visualization tools where it can now interact with a fulsome view of data, a controlled view of data. I want to be able to train my AI and ML and operationalize it directly in my operational systems. I want my business users to access via the data browser all data that they have access to across applications, not just to see it, not just to query it, but to be able to turn that into actionable intelligence and even being able to change data uh, and have those changes then be pushed back into the applications uh, or even originate net new data. Instead of standing up a spreadsheet, I could stand up a solution via the data browser and have all the controls, but retain that agility of, of the spreadsheet world. Uh, and as that grows and scales, you need the governance of a data mesh where you have data as a product into domains that enable different businesses to have autonomy where they can deploy separately, they can build separately, yet they can interoperate via the dataware platform uh, where the controls are embedded within the data itself. The idea of autonomous data. 
So you've heard of autonomous vehicles, cars that can drive themselves, meaning they don't need a, a human. Uh, well, autonomous data is data that doesn't need the application to drive it. It's now under the control of the humans, which is very different than how it's worked uh, previously. By unlocking data collaboration, uh, Dataware dramatically simplifies the lives of real people. Uh, builders don't have to rebuild the data platform every time they build an application. Integrators can enable collaboration versus copy-based integration. Users of applications can build solutions on their own, uh, and they can interact with data as if there were no silos, both view and change. And owners of data can move away from paper-based policies to having systematic controls and guaranteed governance uh, at scale because the controls are embedded in the data itself. Uh, and if you think of the idea of artificial intelligence, well, how does intelligence work in nature? Well, it's collaborative and it's adaptive. Your brain uh, gets smarter by rewiring itself where you want fewer connections, not more connections. Uh, and the fact that we all have separate brains, we have autonomy, uh, yet we can collaborate. This idea of collaborative intelligence, this, this is the future of digital intelligence is, is one that is modeled off of how it works in nature. And this is, this is exactly how it works in nature. Uh, and since she is, um, we do offer a dataware platform and we are the leader, the pioneer in this uh, exciting new space. So we've been in the market for about three years. We have over 100 enterprise organizations uh, and across a variety of use cases, across a variety of industries, including highly regulated ones. Uh, so whether it's customer 360 or unlocking data in a SaaS platform, uh, the, the universalness of dataware allows you to do less integration as you deliver change. Uh, and uh, that's, that's what I had to say. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you so much, Dan. Amazing presentation as always. We've got actually so many questions piling in right now. They're all on Dataware. And all I'm right. going to start I'm going to start with uh, Akshay here. I, I love every time people hear about Dataware, they get so intrigued. They're like, this sounds amazing, but but how do we actually do this, right? Right. So Akshay's question is, is Dataware like a hub that collects all data from different systems and then allows it for consumption? So it, it can be like a hub for systems, uh, but not just for systems. Users can log into it and see and change the data, originate data. But in the context of systems, yes, it can operate as a hub where it can collect data from different systems. And I wouldn't say it's for consumption, it's for collaboration. So the, the idea is not to copy data from every application to every other application. Uh, it's to uh, do a last copy to the collaboration platform. And the systems as you're implementing change can now access that as if it was its own local data store uh, where it gets smarter as more and more systems get added and there's less and less integration. So it's enabling collaboration, not data copying. Got it. All right. Thank you so much for that clarification. Yeah. Uh, Mark here has a comment. So he says, I assume data privacy security would be built in. Is that a fair assumption? It, it is. And uh, honestly, the idea of having controls be within the data itself is the only way to do that uh, at scale. The the whole thesis, like the reason that we do what we do is because uh, we believe in the future where people have control over their data, which is why we have the Data Collaboration Alliance, which is our not-for-profit, where we're actually working on establishing standards like zero copy integration, is it's all about the guaranteeing of, of data privacy and security and uh, ensuring that that's not an afterthought. It's by design. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you mentioned the Data Collaboration Alliance. If people wanted to learn more about how they can get involved in in that project of yours, yeah. where, where can they go to do that? Yeah, if you go to datacollaboration.org, uh, you can read up about the standards. You can even uh, join up. Uh, we have a number of programs, including uh, our uh, Collaborative Intelligence Network, which is a, a freely available uh, use of Dataware, where right now we're starting in the data privacy community, where we're building a crowdsourced collection of uh, regulations and data privacy law and interpretations. And uh, you can uh, join up though and, and contribute. Uh, so datacollaboration.org. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Hamant is asking, is Dataware similar to like a no code platform um, like some of those in the market? Uh, so it's similar in that it accelerates application development, but a low code platform is a faster way of building siloed applications. Uh, uh, you can actually pair a low-code platform with Dataware, use the low-code for building uh, what we think of as skins or experiences, and use mm -hmm. Dataware to uh, basically manage the data without in the integration friction. Mm -hmm. uh, so they both accelerate development, uh, but they don't. by using Dataware, you're not accelerating the proliferation of silos and growing your integration complexity. Okay, awesome. And then we'll take 
One more question here from Dan asking a question to Dan. Here we go. Similar security and permissions questions. How do you open access to data without harming data integrity? Uh, well, first of all, the data isn't uh, the, the access isn't binary where it's like everyone can access it or not access it. You can, you need, uh, when you're looking at a dataware platform, you need to be able to control it down to the data cell level. Uh, and uh, you're also going to want to look for capabilities like being able to have change approval workflows such that I can enable people to request changes, but those changes need to be independently approved by someone who is authorized to, to do so. So being able to configure those controls is actually how you solve for the data integrity issues, uh, not so much uh, the creation of it. It prevents that from happening in the first place. Okay, got it. Well, Dan, I want to thank you so much for, for being on the dedicated conference, the dedicated show, whatever we want to call this. I hope people are having fun. I know people are definitely learning about dataware today again, so thank you. For that and thank you for making time for this all right thanks everyone awesome